previously on Libel the Bible. Scott's pizzeria encounter becomes a teachable moment for human interactions. Rusty questions trans rights. What the fuck, bro? I was just asking if a teacher has a right to display a trans flag in class while being open to all sides. Sure, just asking questions. Fuck you, Scott. This might be the last previously on we do. Moving on, Saul defeats Nahash. Samuel guilt trips the Israelites. Saul's anointed king. And now, episode 76 of Libel the Bible. Get ready to podcast! <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good, man. It's pretty What's good. going on, man? What's up? I'm, I'm Scott, your head of schmoozing. And I'm Rusty, your fill-in for Michael Buffer. Michael Buffer or Michael Buffett? Michael Buffer. You know what's funny? Uh, Michael Buffer, that's the guy that does the Let's Get Ready to Rumble, obviously. You know, uh-huh. they used to. he used to be, like, really prevalent. Uh, I don't know if he is still, but... Mm. He charges, like, a lot of money, like a million dollars or something for, like, each one of those, you know, like, to show up. Here's the funny part. He's got a brother. I don't know his brother's name, (laughs) but his brother has a thing, too. I think his brother does, like, UFC, and his brother's thing is, let's get it on, (laughs) which is, like, you know what I mean? It doesn't quite have, like, the same, especially after, like, let's get ready to rumble, and, like, everyone's fucking going crazy. And then his brother's like, let's get it on. Well, I guess, you know, when you're up against, like, something that's that iconic, you don't want to try and, like, up it. Like, you don't want to swing and miss, so you just do your own thing. And hope. Almost like if you're up against something that iconic, don't even bother going into the same business. Yeah, it's a little weird, yeah. Wait, really? Like, what kind of talents do those It's like have? Wayne Gretzky's brother. His brother, like, p- played in the NHL, had, like, I don't know, 12 career points or something like that. And, like, the stat is, what brother combination has the most points in NHL history? And the answer is, like, the Gretzky brothers. Oh, that's fucked up. Because <laughs> Wayne Gretzky <laughs> has, like, you know, 2,800 points. It's like, he had a crazy amount of points. If you took away all his goals, he would still have had more points than anyone else. Yeah, but you know what? Gretzky might shoot, but Jesus saves. No oh, shit. Well, you know what Gretzky said? He said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I hope he actually did say that. Because I've seen it, him accredited with that. But then I found a lot of quotes are really just accredited to like <laughs> people that you think right. should have said it. Right. <laughs> like, like Benjamin Franklin said way too much shit. Yeah, especially about the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Abraham Lincoln should not have had that many thoughts, <laughs> you know, about the space race. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the space race, I saw that we are now mounting a mission to that meteor that is like twenty five quadrillion dollars or something. It's uh, got like asteroid. diamonds or asteroid, something. Yeah. Asteroid. What, uh, what did I what, say? Meteor. Meteor. Uh, psyche or psyche? It's called. Yeah, it's supposed to be made out of like really precious, like iron and nickel. It's supposed to be worth a lot, I guess. Yeah. It's a lot of nickels. Well, it's not worth a lot if we get it all right, because then like then there's enough for everybody. Right. It's, like so, well, then why would it be worth a lot? The only reason it's worth anything is because it's scarce. The scarcity of it. Right. Mm. Yeah. Like, air is free, right? That's why Jew noses are so big. <laughs> I was thinking, isn't there a Jew, like an ethnic joke about yeah. that? It's all right. For those listening, I'm Jewish, so I get a pass. Plus, yeah. like, I know Scott wanted to tell that joke, but he can't. Well, it's not even that. I I, I, I vaguely knew there was a joke there, but oh, I really yeah, couldn't vaguely. put my finger I vaguely on it. remember. <laughs> vaguely. Uh, yeah. So, um, I think we're going to have a smoking good show tonight. What do you think? Oh, my God. It's crazy out there. It's apocalyptic. Oh, it really was. Not so much today. How was it by you today? Today was not bad. Yesterday in oh. the afternoon, it was orange. It was so crazy. It was Never orange. Anything like it. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, who don't know that uh, Canada attacked us you know, over the last couple of days, <laughs> sent us down some wildfire smoke in New York City. Apparently, Trump had the right idea building a wall. He just... You know, had it along the wrong border. What if we built a wall of fans <laughs> that we just turned them on? Like when he smoke came our way, we just right. blew that shit back. Well, that's like fucking wind power, man. Don't you know what wind power does to you? Yeah. It like fucking, it fucks up like the birds and then it gets into your brain and 5G towers. Do you think the, the, the that, wind, turbines. Our wind turbines are sucking this shit towards us and it's going to kill us? You know what? 
do you think I'll I'll fucking one up you. I'll I'll see that and raise you. All right. What if they specifically set up wind turbines knowing that as fucking the climate changes, there's going to be more and more fires. And then they set us up. They set those wind turbines up in order to propel all that shit. Oh, shit. That's a long game. What I'm saying is it's not a coincidence. That shit was planned the fuck Ooh, out. Wow. That's what the CIA's been doing this whole so, time, man. So, wait, so these aren't wildfires. <laughs> these are like carefully planned fires, probably. Even the fires are probably planned. You can even say engineered fires. I think more likely we're being sold a bunch of shit. You mean to tell me, dude, there's a fire somewhere in another country and New York City, the only city in the world... It decided to settle the smoke on top of us. And, Come on, that can't. It's not even possible. And on top of that, how is it even doing that if the world is round? Because if it's round, shouldn't the fire just go straight out into space, right? But no, it fucking comes to us. Mm. Scott, I think this is our turn now. I think this. We should announce that we are now turning. We are starting our own conspiracy. Yeah, let's um, we're not queuing on. That's taken. Let's pick no. one like a, I don't know. What's another stupid letter? <laughs> like Q's a stupid fucking letter, right? X anon. <laughs> X anon. Q squared anon. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll use the X, but we'll pronounce it like xenon. Okay. So it'll be like Z anon. And when some idiot puts a Z, they're like, they don't know. It's an you know X. what? Let's crowdsource this. Let's ask people what our conspiracy should be named. And they can leave a comment. All right. Yeah, you we'll know what they should do, actually? They should go on Reddit and start a subreddit in our honor. Honor? <laughs> our honor. That's right. It's an honor to listen to us, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a privilege. Not a privilege. No, I, mean, I mean, it's like, free. Like 20 years from now, when some guy goes like, oh, what the fuck? Look at me. I'm a middle class white guy. What kind of privilege do I have? And they'll be like, weren't you able to listen to that podcast 20 years ago about the, the, the guys in the Bible? Right. Yeah. So Remember those privilege. guys? Yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. You know, we can't use X either. X files. That was taken. X going to give it to you. <laughs> um, hmm. All right. Yeah. So, guys, smash those keys. Let us know which an, what, what <laughs> anon we should be. <laughs> it's such a dumb be. fucking phrase. <laughs> smash that like button. How about just press it gently? You know what I mean? Yeah. And wonder why you can't press it again because you <laughs> fucking right. broke it. Smash it. <laughs> Sorry. I smashed it for the last guy. and Now it's not working. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said guy. Uh, You smashed the last guy. (laughs) For the last person. Did you hear about the alligator, by the way, that um, gave birth, a virgin birth? (laughs) What? So there's like an alligator in some kind of preserve where it was like all female, like the Jurassic Park situation, and it wound up giving birth. Nature found a way, huh? So everybody online is like, oh, you know, that's incredible that she was able to do that, and then people are coming in. It's like, hey. It's amazing that they were able to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, so, Zay. Um, wow, did anybody get arrested for like... I don't really... The tra- the transitioning <laughs> of that alligator? So I don't know like the full story. I didn't read like, you know, beyond like just the top headlines. But yeah, apparently like uh, that's uh, that's gone on. Yeah, okay. All right. I mean, that that's, that's happens in nature, right? There's like I've always sea known... Seahorses and shit kind of do something like that, too, or maybe? Well, no. Seahorses, the males give birth, but they still ha- need, like, females. Mm. They haven't woken up yet and realized they don't need females. Mm. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. If you're going to be part of this cult, man, get both feet in. Seriously, Scott. Seriously. Scott uh, took a sip of his wine at the exact moment. I had nothing to say. I was counting. I was counting on Scott to continue talking, but nope, didn't bail me out. No, man, it's, we're not on the same fucking page. I didn't even know you were coming tonight. That was funny. I was even like, when is Rusty coming? And the irony of that is, you're the one that's like all anxious about recording another episode. And I thought you would test me, like just like going to push me to the limit. And so I was going to, I was going to be chill about it, man. <laughs> push to the limit. Be chill. It's, sitting in your fucking studio is hardly like pushing you to a limit. <sighs> no, I meant pushing me to a limit of not recording, like waiting to the last second, like you, you're podcast edging with me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> well, you know, when you wait to the last second, that's when the best. Uh, Explosions tend to happen. Yeah. It's explosive yeah. episodes. Yeah, so what's going on, man? Uh, I went to Atlantic City last <laughs> week. Yeah. 
Yeah. Didn't do much gambling because I'm not good at that shit. No. Good at losing when I, when I gamble. Yeah. Fun do, you, trip. do you play table games at all? Uh, if I do, I'll play like, maybe a little blackjack, maybe something like that. But I didn't on this trip at all. So I very rarely gamble. Yeah, well, um, well, I'm glad you brought it up then. Yeah. No, I had some good meals, though. I had some good meals now. Okay. Some good restaurants. Yeah. I went to a beer festival. That's man. what we're doing. We're going to talk about like... Uh, uh, no, we ain't talking meals? about shit. You had a big pause. You had nothing to say. So I'm trying to just fill the uh, gap. Until you come this up is with filler something conversation. Yeah. Yo, man, we don't have oh, to do man. filler conversation. We can just jump straight into it. You want to jump straight into it? Did Judy Bloom write, Are You There, Margaret? It's Me, God. Well, are you there, God? It's me. Yes. All right. So I did find on the Garden State Parkway there was a Judy Bloom like uh, service area. So it was like, <laughs> I was like, are you there, Scott? It's me, the service area. <laughs> you said that to who yourself? Uh, to myself, because I've noticed saying my jokes out loud get no laughs. <laughs> so I'll just say them to myself. Uh, yeah. I'm glad it was Judy Bloom, man, because then the joke w- wouldn't have been too funny if it wasn't Judy Bloom. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. Yeah. Trump got indicted. Breaking news as we got, as yes, we start the podcast. That's what I wanted to mention. <laughs> Trump got indicted today. We're recording like about an hour or so after it came down the pike that uh, he's been indicted on uh, breaking the Espionage Act. Right? He's in violation of the Espionage Act. And was it obstruction of justice? Did they also indict him on that? I don't know. What he, I just saw the I just saw the uh, the Chiron and the little. Yeah, Learned so we're gonna have angry. to we're gonna have to look into the details of that. But that guy's a fucking idiot. I, I did hear Bill Barr say that. Uh, is that his, his lawyer's name? The the his guy from William Barr. Bill Barr is the comedian, right? Well, that's Bill Burr. Bill Burr is the comedian. Yeah, I wouldn't right, get so, caught up on names. Yeah, w- William Barr said the same thing I've been saying about him. If Trump had just given the document back, like this would have disappeared. Right. But he can't help but run his fucking mouth. And this is why he's getting into all this kind of trouble. I don't understand. Well, don't understand. it wasn't a document. It was a lot of documents. I think the, I think it's... Uh, and the, they it's, were like highly sensitive. It wasn't... So people will say, well, Joe Biden, he was caught with documents also. Yeah. But Joe Biden's... There are like levels of classified documents. Like some classified documents are left like in a top drawer that's unlocked. You know, and it's just like a folder that says top secret. Then there's top secret documents that are in a room that are guard a room that's guarded by like several layers of like security that you have to get through, mm-hmm. you know, and you can't take those documents out of like that room. Trump had those kinds of documents, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he was they asked him for those documents back. Like he had like nuclear information. This is my understanding yeah. of the situation. He also had a document, I think, that laid out like a detail, like what if we decide to attack Iran kind of shit? Yeah, he had like crazy <laughs> shit, you know? Biden had like how to program the clock on the White House microwave or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it was next to his Corvette right. in his garage. <laughs> he was like, yeah, it's right there. Go get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How to operate like, you know, Air Force One <laughs> fucking <laughs> TV. <laughs> So, yeah, so Trump's going to get indicted. I'm sure that's going to incite, like, a good amount of the fucking population in this country. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Like, I I want him to run because he is fucking hilarious. Hilarious. He's hilarious. hilarious. He's already, like, making fun of, like, Ron DeSantis. By the way, (laughs) um, one of my commenters that I listened to on YouTube, he had like a whole video about DeSantis and DeSantis and how like all of a sudden like there's like a whole back and forth. Like sometimes he uses one, sometimes he uses the other now. He's probably trying both because he doesn't want to, you know, openly defy his wife's wishes. Yeah. Because, you know, he's a, he's, he's, he's a punk. Yeah. yeah. He's punk. I, I heard his wife for the first time, by the way. He's not going to be president. Like the combi- like the because combination. Of she, no, 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 no. Just like? no, because she's not going to elevate him. Like people uh, aren't going to like take to her like and have you know what I mean? Like say she's worth voting for him. Like she's not going to elevate uh, him. Oh, uh, kind of like um, what's Trump's uh, Melania? Like yeah, Melania was very elevating. <laughs> well, I mean, at least she was you know not terrible to look at. If you if you don't mind, a girl just like scowls at you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the way the surgeon left are looking. <laughs> well, you know what? It's like, I mean, it's like most women in my life. Like, in in all fairness, <laughs> she's living with Donald Trump, so a permanent scowl is probably the best expression. Like, this, the plastic surgeon was like, look, 
I'm putting so much fucking silicone into your fucking head. <laughs> There's only room for like one expression. What do you want it to be? You want to smile? And she like thought back to like where she lives and who she lives with. And she's like, scowl. I don't even know what a smile is anymore. I got. I ran into a. When I was a young girl in village in Slovenia, I dreamt of marrying a rich man. And can we chain immigrate my whole family here? Because they'll be very productive members of American society. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Just her, not like immigrants in general. Just. I'm sorry, I cut you off. You were about to so, say something very know. important. I'm sure. Somebody scowling. Uh, David Beckham's wife from the Spice Girls. I feel like we might have talked about Victoria her. Beckham. Victoria Beckham. I ran into her at a Whole Foods and go on this. Posh Brooklyn. Spice, yeah. Yeah, yeah Posh Spice. Mm-hmm. And she took a picture with me, and I was like. Mm-hmm. She didn't smile, and then I found out she never smiles. That's like her thing. Like she doesn't want any wrinkles around her mouth. That's fucking so, so bizarre. She never smiles like because her. she doesn't want wrinkles around That's her mouth. What I heard, That's man. the dumbest shit. Well, someone was just being nice to me. Like, no, she didn't smile because you know she doesn't do smile for anybody. She didn't smile like because personally. like you accosted her like while she was online, like just trying to buy some fucking groceries. <laughs> yeah. Like she probably wasn't ready to meet the public. She's probably like you know. She like, you're fun. bothering her, bro. I'll send you the picture of her. I, I, you've shown it to me. Oh, I yeah. saw it. She's, she was smiling on the inside of it. it. She was smiling on the inside of it. She's over it. <laughs> yeah, she was waiting for, like, you to, like, <laughs> ask her to take a picture. Uh, yeah. What else, man? <laughs> Come to my fucking Whole Foods. I'm going to take a picture with you. By the way, I think we've been saying the book of the Bible that we're reading incorrectly. So we've been saying 1 Samuel. Mm-hmm. I think it's 1 Samuel. I think that's how it's... It's 1 Samuel and then 2 Samuel. So it's 1 Samuel 13 is what we ended with, you know? Yeah. Not 1 Samuel 13. So wait, wait. Just even the numbering has to be fucking confusing and debated about for decades and centuries and eons? Oh, you want to go to war over it? Might as well. Why not? At least that makes sense. Going to war over the Bible? (laughs) No, over over the numbering in the Bible. Oh, I'm just... For any reason of the Bible. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go to war. Uh, yeah. You want to get into it? Sure. Let's get into it. But uh, let's just let's just preface it with it uh, that um, chapter thirteen ended very strangely with a sentence that should have been in chapter fourteen. So while we're going to advertise as starting in chapter fourteen, it's really going to be the last sentence of chapter thirteen. Right. Is that what we decided? What well, we haven't decided anything. Well, we decided it. Yeah, we did. Last what did week, we, we decide? We are. It, we, we're starting. We're supposed to start with chapter fourteen tonight, but we have to read the last <laughs> verse in chapter thirteen. <laughs> Why is that hilarious? <laughs> the year we have to start with <laughs> chapter 14 tonight. Like, you know, it's so strict. Like, you're so regimented and, like, by the book, we have to start at you know, 14. We don't have to do shit, man. We're, start, yeah. we're doing 14 tonight. We're starting with 14, but we're going to read the final sentence All right, of you're, 13. Say, you're saying the same thing I'm saying, yes, just differently. <laughs> but you're saying it, like, in some kind of, like catastrophizing like manner <laughs> like if we don't like flip on this light switch five times before we leave the house something terrible is gonna happen so in last week's reading of the bible jonathan surprises and routes the philistines now a garrison of the philistine did i say philistine philistines now a garrison of the philistines had gone out to the pass of micmash micmash end of chapter <laughs> that's it and that gets us to first samuel 14 first samuel 14 <clears throat> you want to go? You want to do uh, it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, let's go. Go, Scott. One day, go, Scott. Jonathan, go, Scott. Go. son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us come over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. Let's go over. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gabea under the p- p- pomegranate. pomegranate. I'm, not, I'm not laughing that I can't say it. I'm laughing at the fact that it's the one pomegranate tree that we keep talking about. Uh, that is at Migron. The troops who were here with no, with you got to start. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start the fuck over. All right, uh, man, I wasn't ready. You usually start off the reading. <laughs> Do I? I don't think <laughs> I so. Don't <laughs> you, you think you would have read better if I had started, and then you read another section? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are all watery yeah, from the smoke, man. Every week there's an excuse for why you can't read. <laughs> Oh, man. You made it into a specialized high school? Uh, Who took the test for you? Right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That was before that. You know, that's before you came into my (laughs) life, man. That fateful day on the sea train. It's me. (laughs) Um, 
We're going to get right back to the show. But before we do, we'd like to invite you to come visit our Patreon. Each week, we discuss a new topic at the intersection of society and religion. We explore the encroachment of religion onto secular institutions, such as schools, workplaces, and government. In addition, we'll investigate whether religion practices what it preaches. So, after this episode, head on over to patreon.com slash libel to bible and join in the conversation. And now, back to the show. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah, under the pomegranate tree that is at Migron. The troops who were with him were about 600 men, along with, oh, here we go, Ahijah, son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, <laughs> son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh, carrying an ephod. <laughs> I already I forgot what happened at the beginning of that sentence <laughs> yes. already. Now, the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. In the pass by which Jonathan tried to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other. The name of the one was Bozes, and the name of the other was <laughs> Senna. One crag rose on the north in front of Michmash, and the other on the south in front of Geba. It's just Can, like... Did we read this? It's just an information dump of names. Like, why are these names important? We didn't talk about these rocky crags, or were they mentioned once before? I I remember like something about rocky crags. Yes. Hmm. If you were a crag, would you be a rocky crag? <laughs> I'd be a sandy crag. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, "Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised." <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at, man? Don't you talk like this? Yes, I'm going to start talking like this. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will act for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. This guy's like a fucking zealot, huh? Mm. His armor bearer said to him, Do all that your mind inclines to. I am with you. As your mind is, so is mine. Oh, so you know why this sounds familiar? Because we did this in the episode that we lost. We read, we had gotten through 14 in our lost episode. Oh, all right. Yeah. Do all that your mind inclines to. I am with you. As your mind is, so is mine. It's like Spock and fucking Kirk, you know? Like they've mind melded, bro. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Thank this, you for that contribution. I, I, I think the Omer, then, I think the Omer Bear is just kissing Jonathan's ass. Is what this is? <laughs> right. He's like, don't kill me. <laughs> then Jonathan said, "Now we will cross over to those men and we'll show ourselves to them. If they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand in our place and we will not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, then we will go up." For the Lord has given them into our hand. That will be the sign for us. I remember having a conversation about this. First of all, when he says, um, now we will cross over to those men and we'll show ourselves to them. Giggity. Do you think because he said, let's go to these uncircumcised men, in that context, by him saying, let's go and show ourselves, you think he literally means like he's going to show them his circumcised uh penis you know that might yeah that kind of makes sense like so like yo who's the boss Who, yeah. look at my junk <laughs> right look at yours right yeah, yeah. Right. Hmm. Hmm. so what's he saying now <laughs> if they call him to them yeah if they if they call them up to them yeah we win if they come down to us we lose i don't know why that's a thing we lose i kind of feel it's like one of those things where a guy like makes a bet with a woman at a bar, and he's like, if I win, I take you home. And she's like, and if I win, he's like, you take me home. Ah. You know what I mean? It, it, I feel like it's like one of those. Ah. Mm. The men of the garrison hail Jonathan and his armor bear, saying, come up to us, and we will show you something. Yes! <laughs> Jonathan said to his armor bear, come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet with his armor bearer following after him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer coming after killed them. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed about 20 men within an area about half a furlough long in an acre of land. There was a panic in the camp, 
in the field and among all the people. The garrison and even the raiders trembled. The earth quaked, and it became a very great panic. So I got to tell you, the armor bearer just, like, sneak attacked. He started this. He yeah, was, they were, like, prone on the ground, and these two guys just, like, walk through slicing motherfuckers up. Yeah. Hmm. Saul's lookouts in Gibeah of Benjamin were watching as the multitude was surging back and forth. Then Saul said to the troops who were with him, Call the roll and see who has gone from us. When they called the roll, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God here. For at that time, the ark of God went with the Israelites. While Saul was, talk- Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the camp of the Philistines increased more and more. And Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all the people who were with him rallied and went into the battle, and every sword was against the other, so there was very great confusion. Now the Hebrews, who previously had been with the Philistines, had gone up with them into the camp, turned and joined the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, when all the Israelites who had gone into hiding in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were fleeing, they also followed closely after them in the battle. So the Lord gave Israel the victory that day. So all these motherfuckers that were, like, hiding out once, like, the Philistines started retreating, they made it seem like, oh, now they're, like, in the fight. Yo, these are the assholes. It's like, hold me back, hold me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the assholes that start the race, hop on the subway, meet the race down, and, like, come out of the shadows and join the race near the end. Like, they, they ran the whole thing. Motherfuckers. Motherfucker is right. And, yo, Jonathan the armor bear, we're just like, yo, we got this? We're just going to start this off? Yeah, he's like the Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Saul is sitting there with his 600 men. He sees like the battle's already going on. And he's like, wait a minute. Who's not here? Who started this? And they actually ran through the roll call to find out who must have started this. Yeah. It's a little weird thing. I mean, it's sensible, right? I guess. Yeah. Who, who's not here? Yeah. yeah. So what did they had to read off everybody? You had to like like everybody sound off like how, I don't know. Yeah, well it's like Shawshank. They had to like step out right, and then you could identify like who's still here. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty organized. They're army men. They'll line up appropriate. Okay, fair enough. The battle passed beyond Beth Avon, and the troops with Saul numbered altogether about ten thousand men. The battle spread out over the hill country of Ephraim. Saul's rash oath. <laughs> Rash like uh, a rash or like fast, like rash, like, you know, not well advised. All right, let's see. So we're in First Samuel 14, verse 24, for those of you reading along. And the first sentence is going to answer your question. <laughs> now, Saul committed a very rash act on that day. He had laid an oath on the troops saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before it is evening, and I have been avenged on my enemies. So none of the truth, I'm sure nothing's going to go wrong with that. (laughs) And it's a totally reasonable request. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of reasonable, right? They're in the middle of a battle, so he's telling people like, yo, man. You ain't got time for a hamburger, yo. We all eat, we feast after the battle. Right, like don't be a fucking Gavone like Scott at the (laughs) pizzeria. (laughs) Cursed be anyone who eats food before it is evening, and I have been avenged on my enemies. Don't stop till you get enough. So none of the troops tasted food. All the troops came upon a honeycomb, and there, and there was honey on the ground. I'm picturing a picture of honeycomb cereal, like a box of cereal. Yeah, I'm picturing like Yogi Bear, you know? <laughs> like his troops are like all Yogi Bear. Like they're not going to be... <laughs> They're not going to be able to help themselves. Uh. All the troops came upon a honeycomb, and there was honey on the ground. When the troops came upon the honeycomb, of course, this is also metaphorical, you know, the honeycomb on the ground. Like, they're like warriors, you know what I mean? Who gives a fuck about a honeycomb? A honeycomb, in this case, is like a bunch of women. They came upon, like, a bunch of women, you know what I'm saying? This is being, like, whitewashed into what's really going on. Oh, all right, let's see if that... You know, Something like a honey up. pot. No, I get you know it. what a honey pot is? So like, it's, not, it's so like it's when not. they try to entrap you with like a hot like female agent. That's called a honey pot. 
Oh, is that what, they, that's what the FBI does all the time? Yeah, they yeah, they, they fucking fuckers. busted some like fifteen year old kid. Like he got into a relationship with some like girl online. He fell in love with her, and she was like, "Can you get me some weed?" And he was like, "Well, I don't really smoke." She's like, "Come on, please, please, please." So he went and he got some weed for his girlfriend to smoke, and he got fucking arrested. Yeah, that's a honeypot. Yeah, that's some fucking bullshit waste of our law enforcement fucking resources. What it is? Yeah, well, back to blue. <sighs> Yeah, back to blue no matter who. Fill those fucking jail cells. Do you want to say something about um, the honeycomb? I, I like that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to bear out, but I like that the honeycomb is really a metaphor for women. Yeah. Like nobody nobody stops to dip their wick until we're done. Right. All right. All the troops came upon a honeycomb, and there was honey on the ground. When the troops came upon the honeycomb, the honey was dripping out. But they did not put their hands to their mouths, for they feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard his father charge the troops with the oath. So he extended the staff that was in his hand and dipped the tip of it in the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes brightened. Yo, dude, come on. Man. You're, you, <laughs> I mean, you, you might be definitely right about this. You may possibly definitely maybe be right. <laughs> then one of the soldiers said, your father strictly charged the troops with an oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food this day. Of course, the soldier waited until fucking he did what he did, right? He wasn't like, he didn't tell him ahead of time. <laughs> because he was probably like, oh, why did I do it? Do it, do it, do it. Right. Let me see, hold on, watch, hold on, watch. Pervert. Then John Jonathan... Bear is a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> then Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. See how my eyes have brightened because I tasted a little of this honey? How much better if today the troops had eaten freely of the spoil taken from their enemies. For now the defeat of the Philistines has not been great. They got to impregnate these Philistine women. Yeah, he wasn't even talking about impregnating. He was just like, yo, let them get their rocks off with the women. Because that's what they do with the women of the conquered yeah, enemies. It was a hard battle, man. Yo, dude, you are absolutely right. This is completely talking about... Sex with the enemy's women that you captured. Yep. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about some honey. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine like a Roman legion? Like after a massive battle against like, you know, the German like <laughs> hill folk or whatever, the, whoever, like the Franks or whoever the fuck they're fighting, the Huns. They're like, boy, after a fucking battle, I wish we could find a honeycomb to stick our fucking hands into. And let's let's just say for a second they are actually talking about honey. Nothing like a good honeycomb after a battle. Let's tell you they're talking actually talking about real food, and this happens to be real honey. I understand that Saul says, "Yo, don't stop to eat. Like we ain't got time to sit down for a meal." If they're talking, we're talk, really talking about food. And Jonathan's walking around. And by the way, Jonathan fucking started this battle and like did his share already. If it really was honey, and he just stuck his staff in honey and took a taste, really. He should be cursed for that. Yeah. Come on. You need to call up. Yeah, man. They've got strict rules back then. Yeah. Strict. And listen, the f- listen, man. Yeah. If you want Israelites to do something, don't tell them not to do it <laughs> and vice versa. Just do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, eat a lot of honey. <laughs> right. <laughs> After they had struck down the Philistines that day from Michmash to Ajalon, the troops were very faint. So the troops flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slaughtered them on the ground. And the troops ate them with the blood. What are they, like fucking vampires? What the fuck is wrong with them? What, you ain't never had no barbecue before? Come on, man. Yo, man, I ain't never been so tired (laughs) that I disemboweled an animal with my bare hands and just ate it like raw, uncooked blood and all. Isn't that what Samson did? Samson did some shit like that. Tore a goat apart, right? (laughs) A lion. (laughs) Yeah, right. A lion. Fucking lion cub, maybe. Then it was reported to Saul, look, the troops are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. And he said, you have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone before me here. Saul said, disperse yourselves among the troops and say to them, let all bring their oxen or their sheep and slaughter them here and eat. And do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So all of the troops brought their oxen with them that night and slaughtered them there. And Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first altar that he built to the Lord. But they already sinned. This is atonement for the sin, I guess. 
I mean, he is the king, so now he gets to decide, like... Maybe, you know, maybe he just, like, stood up and we go, guys, 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 knock, stop, stop, you know, this ain't right. Come on, guys, bring this shit here tonight in front of the stone, he'll bear witness, fucking... Maybe he just chilled them all the fuck out. Wait until he finds out his son disobeyed, like, his creed. <sighs> all right, you want to He's that? like, if it's not one thing, it's if it's not <laughs> troops <laughs> drinking blood, it's my son eating honey. <laughs> You know when I when you when you went from the the uh, the honeycomb being the women the spoils and they flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves I was yeah. like don't tell me they're banging the animals I too. mean I wouldn't doubt that either they Scott I just shit, I right? want to say it because that's like it's too like on the nose for me to say yeah. everyone's expecting me to say that I'm glad you brought it up yeah. Jonathan in danger of death then Saul said. Let us go down after the Philistines by night and despoil them until the morning light. Let us not leave one of them. Despoil them. Like, that's like take their spoils. Right, it's an interesting word. Like, yeah. rob them. Let's like, despoil. It's like dismantling Let's their homes. Let's de-life them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought when, I first, when you first read it, despoil means just take their shit from them. Their women, their gold, their right. food. But, uh... No, not, yeah. let's not leave one of them. Let us despoil them. They said, do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, let us draw near to God here. So Saul inquired of God, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. Saul said, come here, all you leaders of the people, and let us find out how this sin has arisen today. For as the Lord lives who saves Israel, even if it is in my son Jonathan, he shall surely die. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like that idiot. Remember that idiot that said, if you let me win this battle, like when I come home, the first person that comes out of the house to greet me, yeah, like may good. they die. And it's like, does he not understand the logic? The first person to come out of the house will be the person who loves him the most. That's why they will be the first person out of the house. And it turned out to be his fucking daughter. Remember that fucking buffoon? That was awesome. So now he tells fucking the whole... Now he's like, he can't turn back now because he told everybody. It's like in front of everybody. He can't bitch out now. And he probably had no idea it was his son. He was just going to say, just to show you how fucking... Yeah, yeah, right. ...resolute I am right, about this. Right. Like, I don't give a fuck who it is. Right. It's like saying if there's really a God, let him strike me dead now. And then like he fucking strikes you dead. You know what I mean? Because you don't expect it to happen. Do you think like after this rout and now they, they, they're despoiling and they're, 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 they're fucking the calves and the they're oxen. Like this guy has to intro and go, now, 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 let's give it us all to God. Can we have a party first? Can we deal with God in the morning? Like when we're hugging the toilet. Right. Like, oh, God, please. I'll never drink again. Right. That kind of thing. <sighs> Fucking party poopers, man. So um, then Saul said, oh, Lord God of Israel, why have you not answered your servant today? No, where am I? No. You skipped one. Yeah, I skipped one. For as the Lord lives, for as the Lord lives who saves Israel, even if it is in my son Jonathan, he shall surely die. But there was no one among all the people who answered him. He said to all Israel, you shall be on one side and I and my son Jonathan will be on the other side. The people said to Saul, do what seems good to you. Then Saul said, O Lord God of Israel, why have you not answered your servant today? If this guilt is in me or in my son Jonathan, O Lord God of Israel, give Urim. But if this guilt is in your people, Israel, give Thummim. And Jonathan and Saul were indicated by the lot, but the people were cleared. Then Saul said, Cast a lot between me and my son, Jonathan. And Jonathan was taken. All right. Hold on. So first of all, how did he call God? Like he can just like stop in front of people and just go, yo, God, like scream up to heaven. Like how does he communicate with God? Question for you. Yeah. Do you remember? Has Do God remember? directly addressed Saul yet? I don't think so. I don't think he so He was doing either. everything through Samuel. Samuel was God's last appointed judge. God did not want a king. God was like, fuck it. Let's make Saul king. Mm -hmm. Now Saul's king. He's calling God. God ain't fucking answering. You think like this oh. is the fucking judgment now? You fucking people wanted a king. Here's your fucking king. Yeah. I'm outie. 
See you later. Yeah, yeah. Smoke a whole carton of cigarettes. <laughs> right. So he and he said to us, "You shall be on one side, and and I and my son John will be on the other." The people said to Saul, "Do what seems good to you." They're like, "Yeah, you do, you guy. We, we, we want a yeah, party, yeah, man. Yeah. Why are you interrupting our party?" <laughs> <laughs> So, right, like none of this is called <laughs> for, by the way. Nobody's calling for anybody's death. Just yeah. this jerk. <laughs> right, he's like making up crazy rules. Yes. <laughs> and what is Urim or Thummim? I don't know. I looked it up the last time, I think. And I can't believe you don't remember. Urim and Thummim are two objects of a now unknown nature, possibly used for divination, worn on the breastplate of a Jewish high priest. Mm. Oh, right. So maybe he flipped like a coin. One side is sure. umum, urum, one is thumum. Sure. So he flipped it the first time, and instead of it being the people, it was Jonathan and his father. And he was so like, like now you got to <laughs> flip the coin again <laughs> right. and see which one it is. Right. And Jonathan was taken. Right. Like, What if it was the people? So let's say they flipped the coin and it was the people. How many more times would they have to flip oh the coin God. to get it down to one? Yeah. That's pretty stupid. Yeah, Saul's not impressive. Saul reminds me a lot of our mayor, Eric Adams. <laughs> oh, wait. All right. So, listen. Um, Eric Adams, you know, he likes to be on the fr- front of the microphone all the time. Yeah. He's and, a fucking uh, buffoon. Every time I see him, man, I start laughing. I have never. He was doing a report about the smoke condition. And like, and he was reading a prepared statement. Yeah. He, 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 he was reading it worse than I would have read it. <laughs> like, it was bad. He's, yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah, but now, but I see when he shoots from the cuff, he sounds okay. But when he was like this prepared document, he, he's an idiot. He was a train wreck. He's a cop. Yeah, duh. No, and you know, yeah. police, like, when you take the police test, like, if you're too smart, they don't let you fucking join the police. Yeah, don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want free thinkers. No, of course not. Ugh. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. Jonathan told him. I tasted a... L- <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the tip of the staff that was in my hand. <laughs> Here I am. I will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you got the clap, which is not curable back then. This is like, is this a real conversation that two human like beings have, much less a father and a son? Yeah, I don't know. He's not even going to put up a fight. He's not going to be like like the rebellious teenager like, Dad, are you really going to punish me for having like a little honey? Maybe he was like, that was the best honey ever. I will never get better. I can it. die a it's happy man yeah, now. There you go. Imagine he said that to her and then this broke out. He was like, what the fuck? I was just getting. Also, you got to couple that with the fact that like back then, like we value life. Because we have, like, a lot of comforts. But back then, like, there's no medicine. You know, like, you have a toothache. Like, you can't go to the dentist. Like, you just got to live now for the rest of your life in, with, like, a uh, rotting tooth in your head. Right, if right. you, like, you know, tore, like, a ligament. Like, there's no rehab. There's no, like, MRIs. to like. There's no, like, arthroscopic surgery. Life was fucking hard and painful and laborious. You know what I mean? So, like, death was almost like a relief. From life. That's good. Well, you had, you had said we value life, but that's not the word you should have used. I thought like we we um our li- yeah, our life's much better than their lives could possibly have been. So yeah, I mean we value our yeah, personal man, that, lives. That's why most of them are all lame, right? They're all walking with staffs and they're all crooked. Yeah. And yeah. that's why it was like easy for like Braveheart to like rile up like his troops because it's like <laughs> I can either die now or I can continue to live in like the Scottish countryside. With my fucking ugly Scottish <laughs> wife, you know what I mean? <laughs> Broomhilda. <laughs> with that horrible accent. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Then Saul, said, <laughs> then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what you have done. Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the tip of the staff that was in my hand. Here I am. I will die. Saul said, God do so to me and more also. You shall surely die, Jonathan. Then the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die who has accomplished his great victory in Israel? Far from it. As the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has work with God today. I'm waiting for them to bum rush fucking Saul and sacrifice his ass. This is about what's about to happen, I think. So the people ransomed Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul withdrew from pursuing the Philistines. And the Philistines 
went to their own place. That's Why? Why did he withdraw? Yeah, I'm not sure. Because <laughs> maybe the fight wasn't over. So wait, wait. So people couldn't take a break to get some honey, but Saul could stop the whole fucking war to fucking have this trial for some, whatever this is <laughs> for some made up law that he like <laughs> just like enacted that morning and may not have even gotten to yeah, like everybody. Yeah, of course, you know what like, I mean? Yeah. It was like the, it was like the Battle of New Orleans here, right? Wasn't the Battle of New Orleans like fought after the war was over? This is what happens when you give soldiers like way too much methamphetamine and they get like all charged up and riled up and fidgety. Yeah, fuck Saul, man. You want to continue? Saul's continuing wars? Saul's continuing wars. (laughs) When Saul had taken the kingship over Israel, wait a minute, he wasn't king yet? He was. He was anointed last episode. Yes. Oh, so this is a, okay. Right. When Saul had taken gotcha. the kingship over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the Ammonites, against Edom, Edom, against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he routed them. He did valiantly and struck down the Malachites and rescued Israel out of the hands of those who plundered them. Oh, good job, Saul. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishvi, and oh, motherfucker, Malka, Malka Shua. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and the names of the, his two daughters were these. The names of the firstborn was Marab, and the name of the younger was Michael. Michal? 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 Michal. 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 Okay. Right? It's like, does that how CH is pronounced? Like, like I don't know. You know. Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> the name of Saul's wife was Ah- Ahinom. Daughter of Ahimaaz, and the name of the commander of his army was Abner, son of Ner, Saul's uncle. I hope everybody's taking notes. Yeah. They will be tested on this. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. I don't give a fuck about okay. it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read the next paragraph because yeah. I, that, I, that was not cool, man. There was hard fighting against the Philistines all the days of Saul, and when Saul saw any strong or valiant warrior, he took them into his service. That's smart. Now, if he just routed the Philistines on day one instead of interrupting it, he wouldn't have had to fight them all the days of Saul. So that's so. This is what it's telling you. Apparently, Saul is a big fuck up, and that's why he's not getting any help from like fucking Yahweh, because mm. Yahweh just routes the Philistines. You know what I mean? Like Yahweh can just like take out entire fucking armies. What happened to the Ark? He called for the Ark. What do you mean what happened to the Ark? He was like, bring the Ark, because now it was with the Israelites. We never heard of what happened when the Ark came. Or the, the battle so, got halted. So that's, so that's part of like what I'm talking about. Like it's, mm. it's not active. God is dormant because God's like, you fucking fuckers wanted a king. Here you go. You've got your king. <laughs> so you think like he opened the Ark in front of the invading army, and it was just like comic books in there instead of the Ten Commandments, so like it didn't have power. <laughs> like somebody swapped them out. It's not the real Ark. Yeah. Saul defeats the Amalekites, but spares their king. So this is 1 Samuel 15. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did in opposing the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. I'm sorry. I have a... When is this taking place after all the battles that we just read about? Like, I feel like they just gave us a recap of like Saul's entire like reign as king. Right. And during his reign, he had all these battles and this and this and this. And now they go back to Samuel. Hmm. You know what I mean? Who anointed Saul already king. So is this like. Are we jumping back in time again, or is this after all the things that no, you just No, this is after. About? I think this is after. And Samuel's still alive? Samuel's still alive, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. Here we go. But kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. I don't know why you say that, like, all disgusted. <sighs> Whatever, man. If you're looking to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. All right. That's mm-hmm. fair enough. And, and the women have They're the really eggs, only right? Philistines. I mean, what are we talking No, these are Amal- Am- 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 Amalekites now. Oh, these are the Am- oh, and they're, he's, they're he, even the And he wants to kill them all because of a grudge of back when the Israelites came out of Egypt. Yeah, well. Man. Right. Yo, Captain Kirk once said when they were trying to make peace with the Klingons, how does history get past men like me? Yeah. 
That's what the Samuel is. I like it in the original uh, Klingon. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you continue with verse 4? So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Talaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 soldiers of Judah. Saul came to the city of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. Saul said to the Kenites, Go, leave, withdraw from among the Amalekites, or I will destroy you with them. For you show kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. Did they? Because this is like a thousand heard. years later, right? And I've like, never heard of the Kenites. Yeah, like. I don't know. So the Kenites withdrew from the Amalekites. <laughs> Peace it's, out. You know, what, you know what happened? Remember when they fucking, when they crossed, Joshua became like the leader after Moses and they crossed over like the Jordan River and they had to erect those stones like telling them about like all the fucking like history. Right, right. So like you go back. Well, you got to figure. It's like a thousand years later. Some of that shit's been like washed away. I bet you. Their fucking friends were the Amalekites, but some shit got like rubbed off oh, like the stone. Shit. And it says that their friends were really like this other fucking group that he's talking about. Right. But like they were the fucking enemies. Yeah, and they're probably like, that's not how I remember this. My <laughs> grandfather didn't tell <laughs> right. me that. That's not how it went down. Yeah. The the Kenites are like, really? Like we we helped you? Cause like, you know, we hear stories about like the dirty Israelites and <laughs> shit, <laughs> you know? Yo, it's a misunderstanding based on erosion. <laughs> So, so the Kenites withdrew from the Amalekites. Saul defeated the Amalekites from the Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. He took King Agag of the Amalekites alive, but utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the cattle and of the fatted calves and the lambs and all that was valuable and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. You know, like people. <laughs> yeah, I like how they glossed that over. Like, all that they despised and, you know, found worthless. That could mean, like, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking guy. Saul rejected as king. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he had this coming. Whatever is coming. You think so? It. You yeah. think he had this coming? Yeah. The word of the Lord came to, came to Samuel. I regret that I made Saul king. For he has turned back from following me and has not carried out my commands. Samuel was angry, and he cried out to the Lord all night. Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, and Samuel was told, Saul went to Carmel, where he set up a monument for himself, and on returning, he passed on down to Gilgal. When Samuel came to Saul, Saul said to him, May you be blessed by the Lord. I have carried out the command of the Lord. But Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears and the lowing of, cows, of cattle that I hear? Saul said, They have brought them from the Am Amalekites. <laughs> For the people spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop! I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. He replied, Speak. And then Samuel said, I will. I will. <laughs> That's what I just said I'm going to do. Go ahead. <laughs> what are you waiting for? <sighs> Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekite, Amalekites. <laughs> but from the spoil, the people took sheep and cattle, the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in Gilgal. <sighs> So they're, they're having an argument, really, about what God really wanted. Yes. Like, maybe Saul believes that's what God said, but, mm. like, he wasn't being practical. You know, he was like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interpreting the it the way. The real problem is this. One of these assholes actually has conversations with Yahweh, and the other one doesn't. Samuel actually has conversations with Yahweh, but I'm going to tell you this. Saul hasn't done anything wrong. He's just a man trying to, like, do his best. 
Yeah, he's but making he's, decisions. Yeah, but you're not you're not you're not being paid to make decisions. You're paid to being. You he know. didn't even run for office, bro. They just they selected him. All oh, right, because he was tall, dark, and handsome. Like he didn't mm. want any of this. Yeah. So when Samuel said, "I don't know why all these words are indented," has the Lord as has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? That didn't make any sense. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? I I don't know what that means. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Go ahead. Surely to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. I understand. Do you? Is this a poem? I think he's saying to him, like, have you ever heard the expression, it's especially prevalent in corporate America, it's better to do and then ask for forgiveness? Of course. I think that's what he's arguing. He's saying, yo, man, you keep, like, making these sacrifices to fucking forget, to ask for forgiveness, but isn't it better to just obey what the Lord says in the first place than to fucking have all these sacrifices after your constant fuck-ups? Surely to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. All right. For rebellion is no less a sin than divination. And stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. Mm. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Okay. Okay. Here's your pink slip, fucker. All right, yeah. Damn, you just been what's what's a unanointed like disanointed? You're fired. (laughs) (laughs) As our president was wont to say. Yeah, you know you want to pick up verse twenty four, man. Saul said to Samuel, "I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people." And obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray, pardon my sin and return with me so that I may worship the Lord. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Um, now he's being a punk. You think so? Yeah, because now he was like, yo, man, I did what was good, like what I thought was right, blah, 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 blah. Now he's like, well, the people were yelling in my ear and I cave to the people. He's kind of like blaming the people. You're the king, dude. You don't think he's like being genuinely contrite and just saying like, I just, I wanted to do what I thought was best for the people. No, he didn't word it that way. No, listen, I I understand. I understand, Scott. It's hard for you to look at someone from this group of people and try to see them as like human beings. I understand. All right. I can continue. (laughs) And I'll I'll continue to try and understand. (laughs) Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. So Samuel might sense some of what you're sensing, you know, that like he's like all disingenuous. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this very day, and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you and has a bitter, be- bigger dick than you <laughs> and whose wife has better tits. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Wow. All right. <laughs> You're still working on your version of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> As Samuel turned to go away, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this very day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Moreover... The glory of Israel will not deceive or change his mind, for he is not a mortal that he should change his mind. Except for all those other times that he's changed his mind. Word. Then Saul said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. What is he, a fucking idiot? He he can't take the fucking hint? Like, he's got a man up at this point. Now he's just yeah. groveling. Yeah, just take your punishment now. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. I got to say this. 
Do you have to say this uh, yeah, or do yeah, you want to say yeah, this? A little of both. Like Saul deserves, I think, deserves a break. Like you said, he did not want this position. Mm-hmm. And Samuel didn't want a king to be anointed. So Samuel's not going to the God and like putting any good words in for Saul. The only, like he's nitpicking the fuck out of yeah, Saul. The, like the people should be, be, the people are the ones who deserve to be punished because they're the ones who demanded a king. Saul didn't ask to be that king. Yeah. But he's the one that's being punished. Then Samuel said, bring a Gog, king of the Amalekites, here to me. And a Bang Gog. A gong, get it on. <laughs> Bang a gong. And a Gog came to him haltingly. A Gog. A Gog said, surely death is bitter. Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so your mother shall be childless among women. Oh, shit. Your mother, son. Yo, so, no, you're saying he's your gonna mother's going to be childless. You're about to get fucking him. your head lost off. I got it. And Samuel hewed Agog in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Nice. Yo. I didn't realize Samuel had, like, this fucking power, man. I thought he was just, like, an old priest. You think Agog was in shackles? Like, it was an easy target. Oh, like, he was fair. Shit. There's I nothing fair about that, this right. fucking thing. Do you think Samuel's now looking at Saul going like, that's how you fucking do it. When you're told to do shit, that's how you fucking I mean, do it. I do now. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whose death? Yeah. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul. Okay. And the Lord was sorry that he made Saul king over Israelite. I see. Israel. The Lord was sorry. Yeah, so that means he regretted it. But I thought he's like a perfect being. Didn't Samuel just say, like, the Lord doesn't have regrets or, like, make mistakes? No, I don't think he said that. <laughs> he said something like that, yeah. Something like that. Maybe something that was perverted into the God's all-knowing and never doesn't make mistakes. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you fucked up, God, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are, we, what are we looking at? Are we looking at another chapter or no? So that's it? You had nothing else to say about that? I was no. going to like look through the reading to find like the section oh, where okay, yeah. Yeah, go, go. you don't want to vamp. No, no, no. Why don't, yeah, why don't you start <laughs> looking for evidence that God is all-powerful and all-knowing all right. and doesn't regret? That's all right. Let's, let's move on. Yeah, let's move um, on. We're on 1 Samuel chapter 16. David anointed as king. Oh, shit, David, son. Who's David? Like, and Goliath, David? Yeah, David. Like, David. Who's David? Like, the famous statue, you know, like, yeah, fucking the small, Michelangelo. Yeah, the small made, penis? Made what? The guy with the little yes. penis? Yes. Florida, like, banned him. David. Oh, they should David ban, and Goliath. They should ban him from going in the pool oh, before he poses. David. <laughs> All right. David anointed as king. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? It's been two minutes already. Let's get going. And you didn't like him anyway. (laughs) I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the the Bethlehemite. Sorry, I had trouble pronouncing that name. For I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. What? I don't know. Right. Let's, let's, <laughs> keep it going. Let's, keep let's, it going. Let's, yeah. Let, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> I think the general rule of thumb is don't pay attention. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Just take it for what it is. Don't pay attention. <laughs> and the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. 
Um, why are they so scared that Samuel has shown up? You know, because he hacks up kings, man. <laughs> so earlier in earlier chapters, it talks about how he travels from town to town, right? He's and, a man of the people, right? And he gave like sermons. Well, that's how it was presented. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm starting to wonder, like, is he like the Grim Reaper? Whoa, like he shows yes. up and just like wipes shit out? You're going to get caught doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but now let's get back. Is Saul dead or not? Was I, that last paragraph in the last chapter just talking about a future event? You're, you're thinking too much now. Or is this guy starting to go crazy? No, I think having conversations with Yahweh is perfectly reasonable. Right. When they came, he looked on... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. He looked on Eliab and thought, who the fuck is Eliab? <laughs> That's not what he thought. Surely his anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Except for Saul, who we chose because he was tall, dark, and handsome. No, if you remember correctly, the people chose Saul. Oh, the shit. The Lord's choosing the new dude. All again, and again, then why was Saul the one that was punished? The people should have been punished. You're, you're right. Saul was just doing the best yeah, a man could do. Yeah, I mean, he was a patsy. To... Man. But you know what? Tall, dark, handsome, and rich. You know what? Fuck you. He's the guy that was accused of assassinating JFK, yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. He was just a patsy. Then Jesse called a Abinadab. I and wish made that him, I had Jesse's girl. And made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. Yeah, so he's like, hey, check out this guy. Yeah, Not yeah, the yeah. Lord didn't choose him. Yeah, it's Psych. Like a, it's like a pageant. <laughs> yeah. Then Jesse... Uh, made Shema pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. That's exactly what's going on here. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. I thought looks didn't matter, so why is he being described in this way? Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. Then Samuel said, take off your shirt. (laughs) And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David (laughs) from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. I'm sorry. Let's read this again. He was ruddy. Now he was ruddy. I guess it's a a good thing. And had beautiful eyes. And was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, what did he take? He took the horn, I was quote the- unquote, the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. Yeah, you're about to say something. And gross. the quote unquote <laughs> spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. All right. So you tell me what the fuck is going on. Well, listen, well, listen the spirit hadn't been released like, in quite... Yo, that young boy that's out there with those sheep, send him over here. I am not... We're going to anoint him <laughs> with the oil from my horn. In his defense, the spirit of the Lord hadn't erupted in a while, so there was a it's lot been, of spirit. It's been some time. <laughs> it's been since that time that he asked Moses to bring that other kid up the mountain. Yeah. All right, so... All right, so David has been anointed the new king. Um, The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. David plays the lyre for Saul. Yeah, you got this? Sure. David plays the lyre for Saul. (gasps) That's got to be sort of like rubbing it in Saul's face, no? (laughs) That's like you ever see um, European Vacation? 
Oh, God, no. I mean, yeah, it's so forgettable, though. After so watching vacation, there's, like, a scene in the beginning of the movie where he's, like, at a party, and there's a band playing, and the song is Scotty Doesn't Know. And the song's about, like, the guy, like, in the crowd, how the lead singer that's singing is banging Scotty's girlfriend, but everyone knows except Scotty. And Scotty's in the crowd, like, <laughs> listening to this song. And then the lead singer brings the girl up on stage as girlfriend. And they start making out after Scotty doesn't know. Yo. That's like that's like David playing the Lear for Saul. It's like David like goes to Saul. He's like, yo, remember when you were the fucking king? Well, now I'm the fucking king. Chosen by Yahweh. Yo, man. So during COVID, when we were all locked down and all my corporate things went on to like Zoom meetings to a Microsoft Teams or whatever, I had this one project coordinator. Every time we were on a conference call, he would work in every once in a while like, I would say something or I'd ask a question and he'd be like, yo, Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> and people would giggle. Right. And after like 10 to 10 time, I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? Scotty don't know shit. And then he had, it's a song, dude. I was like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, so, yeah. Cause my name's Scott. Now you say it. Yeah. I, like, I, got, I got it, it Scott. All right. And I'm rusty. And this is liable to buy. <laughs> Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> <clears throat> David plays the Lear for Saul. Can I can I pause for a second again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lyre, it's like a musical instrument. It's like yeah, no, a, no, I know that. It's like know. a guitar. Did you read the previous paragraphs or did I? I read it, and then when we got to this, I asked you to read it. Again. You had like a glazed look on your face, and you were like, "Yeah." Oh shit! Do you want to read it? I should right just just to balance the workload. I should right do it. I was really tired like all day. I just want to point that out. Okay, yeah. I believe you. But I but I came I came with it as much as I could. Listen. I get it. Now the reading spirit of (laughs) now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. What the fuck, man? Yo, this is getting good. And Saul's servant said to him, "See now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord lowercase now command the servants who attend you to look for someone who is skillful in playing the lyre." And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will feel better. <laughs> okay. So the passing the of music the music to- soothes the savage beast. So I'm assuming like you know, Saul is just upset, like he's being what do you call it? He's stepping down. I have the vapors. He's stepping down. Uh, so he that's what's tormenting him. It's not an evil spirit. He's depressed. He just lost his fucking power. Yeah, like he's no he's longer- sad. So He's now, melancholy. Yeah, now this fool is going to play the lyre and make you feel better. Yeah. It's like your medicine. So Saul said to his servants... You know what will cheer you up? If the new king fucking plays some music for you. And it's probably shitty fucking music. He's out tending sheep. When did he get a chance to practice the lyre? Music. He's, David's probably like this super handsome dude who's going to be a better king than fucking Saul. He does everything better. They're like rubbing it in his fucking face. He, play, he plays a fucking lyre on college campus with no shoes and socks. Yeah, he's like tree. fucking Jimi uh, Hendrix out there on the lyre. <sighs> so Saul said to his servants, provide for me someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen a son of Jesse. The Bethlehemite, who is skillful in, skillful in playing, a man of valor, a warrior, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Everything you're not, Saul. Right. <laughs> so Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David, who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a kid, and sent them by his son David to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand. And Saul would be relieved and feel better, and the evil spirit would depart from him. They're fucking with him. So basically, it wasn't even like, Yahweh made David the direct like king like he sort of like did it like in a backdoor fashion where he inspired like the servants of Saul to recommend David and then Saul sent for David you know what I mean dude Samuel went out to see Jesse in the fucking hinterlands wherever Mm -hmm. the fuck they are and they anointed David the new king no one told Saul 
No, I don't think Saul they, still thinks he's the fucking king. They didn't anoint him king. God just like God like touched him, you know. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his. Okay, yes. all right, f- fair enough. He's not but, anointed. But, but, he's not anointed but the, king yet. But the, the heading of the whole chapter was David anointed as king. Yeah. So this isn't actually. I think he was anointed as king. I think. When he started trembling and yeah. the, 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 the evil that's, spirit. That's when he that, was anointed and no and longer king. And he felt it from a distance. Right. Okay. God was no longer with him. Why do they need to like have this whole clandestine like transference of power? I don't know. And David, know, like David's the real king now. And like Saul is just like some Does puppet. David know that he's the king? I mean, why else did he get the anointments all over his face? <laughs> right. <laughs> he's like, well, I mean, I don't know. Is it the first time that he had like... He's, Anointed on his face? I, I mean, this much in one time. I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's casual for him at this point. He probably never had this much anointing going on like in front of a group of people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, he didn't realize it was a special anointment. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. So that's what I think. I think oh, that's what's happening. Oh, shit, bro. What? Turn to the next section. We're going to save it for next time. What? David and Goliath. Oh, Fuck shit. David yeah. and Goliath. Next chapter. All right. I mean, this is a good cliffhanger, this right? We're going to be doing David and Goliath. I just don't like the fucking... I don't like... David's the new king, man. And nobody yeah. fucking told David's Saul. David's the new king. Saul deserves better than that. Um, yes. Th- I mean, that has been my argument this whole time. I don't like fucking Samuel. I like his books, though. So far, the book... A lot of, lot of, lot of good it's stuff good. I, it yeah. might be, you know, it's... Uh, I'd say... Uh, Genesis... Yeah. Had some fucking weird ass motherfucking stories. Yeah. Exodus was pretty decent until like all the rules and fucking whatnot. And then Samuel. Yeah. But you know what? Genesis wasn't as believable as this. This is much more oh, believable. Yes. <laughs> this is much more grounded, you know, like yeah. on a personal level. Like yeah. you can relate to like all these people. So there's some like subterfuge going on, some underhanded Game of Thrones shit going on here. It's right. all kinds of shit going on. Yeah. All right. So uh, we will see everybody next time with uh, David and Goliath, motherfuckers. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo.